Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, Side Hustle Seattle. Now about two months ago, I made a video about the Amazon Influencer Program and about me joining it to see how it goes. And recently, somebody commented on the video asking for a follow-up, so I'm so glad you asked. I would love to answer. Lots of thoughts, lots of learning. Let's get started. So just so we have a good baseline, so what exactly is the Amazon Influencer Program? Well, if you're a content creator, so on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, and you have a decent following and engagement, you can actually sign up for the Amazon Influencer Program. Now they don't say how many followers you need or what that engagement needs to look like. So my suggestion is if you're a content creator, just try to sign up and let's see what happens. But essentially what you get with being on the Amazon Influencer Program is you get access to a Amazon storefront where you can essentially like curate a list of your favorite Amazon items to share out with your followers. And you also get access to on-site commissions. Now that's gonna be the big key. I'm gonna talk about that a little bit more. So you've heard me mention the on-site commission a few times. So what the heck is it? So essentially, if you go onto a product page on Amazon, not all pages have them, but most do, and you scroll down towards where the review are, you may see some videos that people have posted. But what you don't know is a lot of times with those videos, they're actually affiliate videos. So these are videos that influencers have made. If you go and you watch that video and then you purchase the product, they will actually get a commission. So that's why it's called on-site commission. It's on the product page itself. Now, the important thing about that and why that's such a big deal with on-site commission, somebody just has to go on that product and they have the potential to see your video, in which case you get commission. So complete strangers that you've never known, they have no idea who you are, can still aid in you getting commission. So as you can imagine, there's a lot of money that you can earn from doing on-site commissions outside of just affiliate links. And don't get me wrong, like the affiliate marketing business makes people a ton of money, but this is absolutely just another way to get earnings. And the thing about it is, which you may not know also, is that even if you join the Amazon Influencer Program, there is a separate process or application in order to be eligible for on-site commission. So you'll go ahead and you'll get approved for the Influencer Program. From there, you have to go through the process to get approved for on-site commission. Now, the way that it works, is you have to upload three videos, um, three essentially reviews of products or whatever you, kind of videos you want to make in terms of the product. They will review those videos and then they will approve you for the program. Now, the biggest thing to know is you only have three chances to get approved for the program. If you don't get approved after three tries of them trying to approve your, your application, you cannot do on-site commission. You can continue to be an influencer, you continue to have affiliate links, but you can't do on-site commission. And I failed the very first time I went through the process. So I wanna put you on game so you can learn from my mistakes so you don't do the exact same thing. How exactly did I fail? So I spent hours, days going around my house and just filming every product that I purchased from Amazon or even that I didn't purchase from Amazon, but Amazon sales making videos, posting them, making thumbnails, doing the full thing. I mean, it took me so much time and I uploaded all of them. There's probably like 30 videos and I was waiting. It's like, okay, you know, it may take a couple weeks for you to figure out if you get approved for onsite commission. I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I get the message, failed review. Now, I wasn't sure why I failed it because I knew I didn't violate any of the policies. I made sure to take a look at like what you can and can't do and et cetera, the standards that you're supposed to have. And I was just like, what is happening? So I went and I looked at a bunch of other YouTube videos and I saw a guy that said, for that program, yes, you do need to upload at least three videos, but you should always only upload three videos to start when it comes to getting approved. Because what happens is if you upload 30 videos, they're going to take a look at all 30 of your videos. And if you make any mistake in those videos, they're going to fail you. So it's better to just make three solid videos, let them only review those, and then after you are approved for on-site commission, go ahead and just you know upload the rest of them. So what happened was I got denied. They literally said in order for me to reapply, I had to delete every single one of my previous videos and I had to upload three brand new ones. So just hours of work with even uploading and just like formatting everything, I had to completely delete it, film three brand new videos, upload it, and then wait for them to get approved. So luckily I got approved. So after the second chance I got approved, I was sweating bullets because I really wanted to make sure that I got it. And so the question now is, okay, well, then can I still use those previous videos that I had uploaded now that I'm already approved for onsite commission? And the answer is yes. I don't, there's not like something written down, but quite frankly, based on some of the other videos I've seen people have on product pages, 
the standard that they use to approve you in the process or in the program has nothing to do with the standard they want you to upheld or uphold once it actually comes to being in the program, if that makes sense. Like when you're first getting approved, yes, put your best foot forward, like the best videos you can make. After that, just general reviews are going to be perfect. They don't need to be like MKBHD style videos, just like your, your run of the mill review is going to be perfectly fine, even if it's like 30 seconds. So that is what I've learned. Please make sure if you're going to apply for on-site commission, best three videos you can do after that. Don't mail it in, but you don't need to try nearly as hard. If you all wanna know, the biggest question is, how much have I actually made? Well, I value transparency, so I'm more than happy. I will share my screen, I'll show you my metrics, we can go through it. I'll show you what I've made for my affiliate links, and I'll show you what I've made from on-site commission, and I'll even show you which products have gotten me the most from a commission point of view. So I'm more than happy to show you. Let's go ahead and get into that. Okay, so here's just my storefront. So everything that I upload gets posted right here on my storefront for anybody who has my link to see. Um, and then you can also see my curated list right here. So these are like clusters of different products that I think fit a theme. So like we did a big renovation in my house. So these are all the bathroom fixtures. This is some content creation must have. And so you can link people to some of these different lists and storefronts. Now, again, the storefront is only something that you get if you're a content creator. But let me show you what it looks like when you upload a video. So this is in my drafts. So when you create a video, all you do is you can go to, you know, post a video or a photo. You can upload up to 15 at one time. Um, and then it'll upload here. And then you can create a thumbnail if you want. I always do a thumbnail. I think it just makes it more engaging. So I'll upload a thumbnail. Once you do that, you need to create a title that's gonna show up on your video, and then you need to link products. So these are the products that directly show up in this video. You cannot add products that aren't involved in the video. So if you're like, oh, also, I love this, I don't know, pair of shoes I bought from Amazon. If it's not featured in the video, you shouldn't be adding it. So I have to click on here. If I purchased it from the same account that I plan to upload the videos on, you'll see your list of all your past orders that you place, and you can just directly link to it. Otherwise, you can go to Browse History and you can search Amazon for the products in this. So this right here is that direct um, playpen for babies. Okay, so now I can just go through and add the other products. So I had this mat in this video. I showcased these little pull-up rings. And I also showcased, and I can look it up, um, ball pit balls. Okay, so I can go right here, click on the balls. I can see the options. I had 50 and then I can just add the product and then I am good to go. So now when you go back to the video, you see this is my video. These are the items that are going to be linked in the video, which means that this video can show up on any of these products. So just keep that in mind. If you're reviewing multiple things, there's an opportunity for this video to show up for any of these product pages. So now that I'm good, I can go ahead and just submit the post and it'll be approved. It typically takes like 24 hours. It's typically 24 to 48 hours. It'll get approved or denied, and then you'll be good to go. Now on this page right here, you can just generally see all of my stats for videos. So I've had 2,600 views on all my videos. This is the average duration and the percent of the video that's viewed, and it shows that I'm earning the on-site commission. Now when I didn't earn it and it said I was denied, it also told me it right here. So just know that that's what that is right there. So let's just look into um, what I actually earn. So let me go over to the tab. Okay, so this is what I earn from my affiliate links. And these are just the links where I physically send somebody out a link saying like, hey, check out this product, or this is where they're linked on my video or within my channel or within my website. So as you can see, I'm not doing well with it. <laughs> This has been since the beginning. So essentially since I've had this, um, these are the stats for year to date. Um, and I've only made $8.64. I've had 490 people click on my links. They've only ordered nine items. And this is the total amount of revenue from those items that have shipped. Um, and this is how much I've earned. So as you can see from an affiliate standpoint, I'm not making pretty much anything. Um, but to be honest, my channel doesn't really, it's not like conducive for a lot of affiliate links. I could do a lot better, I'll put it that way. I need to do a better job of creating some sort of funnel to get people to click on links because a lot of the things that I review are more software-based than they are like hard products or things that you would buy from Amazon. So this is not doing good. But keep in mind, there's a difference between my affiliate stuff 
um, and then my on-site commission. So I'll show you my on-site commission in a second. But you can see what people have purchased and what they've ordered and all of that. So you can kind of see those stats. Now let's look at what I've earned from on-site commission. So if I click over here, this is my on-site commission. So since I've essentially, since May, when I created this channel and created this, you know, on-site account, I've made $326, so much better than what I've earned from people physically clicking my affiliate link. And this is what I mean when I say on-site commission just has a higher earning potential because I didn't do anything to earn this. I just made the video and then they posted it themselves and people clicked on it. So of it, I've had almost 2,000 clicks, which is a lot, 261 items shipped, um, $11,500 of revenue. Um, and then this is how much I've actually earned. And so you can see which products have done well for me. So the Magic Bowler, I bought a mini juicer and I reviewed it. And that video was actually one of my longer ones and more involved ones. That one's actually done pretty good for me. But you also have other stuff. So I reviewed everything we used to renovate our house. And so some of that stuff has also done really, really well. Um, so this is just the stats. I mean, feel free to look at what I've made and, you know, do your thing. But um, these are the stats of what I've earned so far. So in total, you know, $334, et cetera, is what I've earned from being within this program. Okay, so now that I've done it for a couple months, here's my like biggest takeaways from this whole thing. One, when it comes to just the affiliate side of it, so the links that you send out to people, obviously you need a way to drive traffic. I think the biggest thing for me is like, my channel isn't conducive for like product reviews. I don't really review products that would be sold on Amazon. I do a lot of digital products. So there needs to be a better way for me to be able to push traffic towards my affiliate links. So I have to think of different ways like that. So just something to keep in mind. The second thing is on-site commission is 100% the most passive and easy way to make money. No question. So if you have access to that, absolutely. Because I've made, what, 300 plus dollars and I really haven't done much. Yes, I filmed the videos. Yes, those originally took me a long time. But now I'm in just the rhythm where as soon as I order something from Amazon, I like film myself opening it and then I'll make a quick review and then I'll post it. Like I just get in a good rhythm. I'm always ordering stuff from Amazon. So it's really not that big of a deal. Um, so you kind of start to like figure that out on your own. I will say though, when it comes to on-site commission, there is a lot of strategy that can go into it. And so what some people would do will actually use tools to show them which products would make the most money, which products to buy at certain times. Cause as you can imagine, like it may be sense to review Halloween products in September, because a lot of people are going to be going towards those. So there's different tools to have strategies to actually make a lot more for on-site commissions and make it more of like your full-time side hustle versus just something passive. And then the last thing I've realized is once you start posting these videos on Amazon, all of a sudden your inbox gets flooded with sellers on Amazon trying to give you free products to review. And if I had a channel where I was just reviewing products, I would love that. So I need to find a way to do some of these product reviews in a way that like doesn't not make sense for my audience. You know what I mean? Because obviously it's free product. I get to review it. Then I get to put a video out there. Um, but it just doesn't make sense for my channel. So I got to figure out a better way to do that. But if just know you will get all of a sudden multiple emails a week by people just trying to give you stuff to review, which is a nice thing to have. But overall, I think the experience is good. It's very low effort for the most part to get something out of it. Yes, obviously it can be a lot more money. Yes, you know, 300 plus dollars isn't like the most thing in the world, but if I was smarter at like which products to buy and which ones to review and whatever, you can get significantly more. So even if you just strategically bought products you don't even really need in your daily life, because you know that you're gonna get the money back tenfold, like that just makes sense. So things to keep in mind, Please let me know all your comments, thoughts, suggestions below. Thank you as always for watching my video. I'll catch you in the next.